apparently everybody I know in Laramie knows Emily Brown and Blossom Yoga. I've, <laughs> I've never met her before, but my friends are always saying, oh yeah, I just did this really fun thing at Blossom Yoga, you know, Emily Brown, or I'm going to this really great event at Blossom Yoga, Emily Brown, and I wondered why Emily Brown would never invite me along and why I never met her. And uh, today I met Emily Brown. Life brought me into her orbit. And uh, I don't even know if I need to introduce her because apparently you all already know her, but I'm going to read her bio anyway. Um, Emily Brown opened Blossom Yoga in 2008 and is one of the primary teachers and developers of Blossom Flow Yoga Teacher Training. In 2006, she became a nutrition therapist her plan was to work directly with clients to improve their diets, but instead she became dedicated to healing her own dysfunctional relationship with food and her body. She's currently enrolled at the Institute of the Psychology of Eating, and she's passionate about combining this knowledge with yoga to extend that healing to as many people as she can reach. She's made it her life work now to completely revolutionize the way we think about health and our bodies. In fact, her title is Love Your Body. Emily Brown. So love your body. It sounds great, right? Well, when it comes to our relationship with food and our perception of our body, things get a little rocky. Our conversations and inner dialogues are usually filled with shouldn'ts, comparisons, and harsh criticisms. So as a rule of thumb, we try to eat as little as possible. And when we do eat, we apologize for it. But the truth is this kind of relationship with eating is unnatural and often destructive. So there is nothing natural about eating to shape the body or control weight. So when we feel any amount of turmoil, guilt, or shame around eating, we are stressing our bodies in a way that affects our digestion. So our bodies respond biologically to any stressor, whether it's real or imagined. So the process goes a little like this. Imagine you just scooped yourself a bowl of your favorite ice cream and you sit down to eat it. You take that first bite and immediately that loud inner dialogue begins. I shouldn't eat this, this is so fattening, and on and on. Your brain actually interprets those thoughts as a stressor and causes your body to respond to that stress in the same way it would if there were an intruder knocking down your front door. So among the many things that happen to preserve your energy, your digestion shuts down sometimes for hours. This causes great strain on your body's ability to process and absorb any nutrients, not because of what you ate, but because of what you thought. Now imagine you have that same bowl of ice cream, and rather than letting the crazy talk start, you sit down, you take a deep breath, you take a first bite, and you think, mm, mm, mm. You taste that ice cream, you eat slow, you savor and enjoy that whole damn bowl. This process has the opposite effect on your system. This triggers the parasympathetic nervous system, which causes your body to relax, and your digestion turns on full force. Now your body is easily processing and assimilating those nutrients without any added burden on your system. So contrary to what we're all programmed to think, food is so much more than simply calories in and out. Food itself isn't meant to make us skinny or fat. Food isn't good or bad. There are no forces of evil at work in the grocery store to sabotage your healthy lifestyle. Food is life. It is quite literally what keeps us alive. So every time we choose to eat, we choose to live. That's it. The purpose of food is to give health, delight in eating, and the nutrients necessary so that we can pursue life with energy, passion, and joy. Natural eating is totally free from guilt and fear. So you might be thinking, and this in the exact words of my brother, all of this from a skinny bitch? <laughs> Love your body, eat with pleasure, easy for her to say, but it's not. Because I, like most of us, grew up with a very heightened awareness of how the shape of my body affected how I am seen and accepted in this world. I've spent years never feeling skinny enough, tall enough, fit enough, or good enough. And after two years in nutrition therapy school, I realized I wasn't happy. And all of this focus on the most healthy diet only contributed to the feeling of never enough. It wasn't just me. I started to realize that it's almost impossible for anyone to be happy with their body. It seems we're all waiting for the last 10 or even two pounds to come off before being happy with who and where we are. So we spend our days wishing, comparing, and restricting, all in a pursuit of an ideal that doesn't exist and it won't make us happy. 
So instead of focusing on my many gifts and talents, I've spent a good portion of my life distracted by what to eat, when to eat, how to eat, all driven by dissatisfaction with my body. So what changed? Over time, I've practiced compassion, acceptance, noticing my thoughts, recognizing the lies I listen to, and surrounding myself with people who do that same thing. It's a daily practice. Still every day when I look in the mirror and I start judging or criticizing, I remind myself, I am so much more than just this body. I am spirited. I am a dreamer, and I make a difference in this world, regardless of my hair, my dress size, or the shape of my body. For me, the shift happens when I change my conversations and thoughts. So imagine the possibilities. If we all took the amount of time we spend thinking about food and our bodies and put it into our life work. Imagine the amount of joy, pleasure, and vitality that replace the stress and self-criticism. Because you see, health and nutrition is a journey. May you choose yours to be joyful, loving, and free. So tonight, go home, scoop yourself that bowl of ice cream, but before you eat it, stop and take three deep breaths. Then taste that ice cream. Enjoy that ice cream and laugh with your friends while doing it. It could just change everything. Thank you.